Hello, everybody. Uh, it's really nice to be here. Uh, this is the first time for both Nicholas and I speaking at KubeCon or any collocated event, so thanks for having us. Uh, so without further ado, scaling tactics for Prometheus metrics collection. But before, a quick introduction. Cool. Um, hello, everyone. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, my name is Nicholas. I'm observability tech lead at Coralogs, uh, and I'm currently a um, Prometheus operator and Persis maintainer. Uh, and also, I'm mentoring some colleagues on GSOC 2024 uh, for the Prometheus operator as well. Uh, my name is Arthur. Um, I'm also a Prometheus operator maintainer. Besides that, I help with Prometheus client Golang. Uh, I've been a mentee for Prometheus in Google Summer of Code last year. I was also a mentee for KubeWord in 2020. And this year, I'm finally mentoring uh, for both projects, uh, I mean, for LFX and GSOC, but for Prometheus Operator and Prometheus. Cool. Um, just to be aware, like, uh, who is using Prometheus in production here today? Nice. So, wow. Okay, and who is using Prometheus Operator to manage Prometheus on Kubernetes? Yeah, plenty of people. Nice, that's, that's more than I expected. Uh, uh, but even though you already know Prometheus Operator, let's do a quick uh, TLDR. Our presentation focuses a lot on the Prometheus Operator, uh, so it makes sense to just explain it. Prometheus Operator is used to manage uh, a set of tools on top of Kubernetes, and those are Prometheus. Prometheus in agent mode, we also uh, manage alert manager and Thanos ruler. The scrape configuration for both Prometheus and Prometheus agents are done through more CRDs. The pod and service monitors, they are used to, as an abstraction on top of Kubernetes service discovery. We also have probes to configure black box exporters, and we have a brand new CRD called scrape config it's still in alpha, but uh, the target is that we mimic the whole Prometheus configuration in one CRD. Yes, the it's the configuration for this service discovery, like console and then so on. Yeah, like uh, GK, uh, GCP, Azure, uh, all the other service discoveries that are not Kubernetes, but we still want to, to support on, uh, on Prometheus operator. Finally, we also have the Prometheus Rule CRD, which is used to configure uh, alerting, and and alerting and recording rules for both Prometheus and also the Tunnels Ruler. Cool, but today we are here to tell a history, and this is Eva, and we are telling you uh, her history during um, into automating some manual works done by her family on, on their, fa uh, their farmer. Um, so uh, Eva's decided to unite her passion for technology and their, their, business, their family business. So she notes that their parents are doing a lot of manual work in like measuring soil humidity, soil pH, like irrigation systems, and so on. And thank you, MidJourney, to allow us to generate this cool image. Uh, well, she just started simply implementing uh, IoT devices to monitor soil humidity, and these devices are, of course, exposing Prometheus metrics. And these simple devices are exposing around 100K unique time series, which is like pretty low amount of time series. Like, she's using Prometheus operator because, of course, if you're using virtual machines, you're gonna use in Kubernetes. This is the only way to go. Um, and she's using Prometheus operator. She defined the Prometheus CRD. One gigabyte of memory is more than enough to, to, to handle all this, this time series. Now she's alerting, she's dashboarding, and very happy. Uh, she, she enjoys using the this, this setup, using IoT devices, Prometheus. So it's, she starts to, she, she wants to do more, and she's now replacing the manual work she was doing to measure pH, and she's using new devices for pH measurements. Uh, with this new pH uh, devices, they, they are a little bit more verbose, and the, the amount of time series that one single Prometheus was scraping went from uh, 100K to 1.5 million. Uh, with 1.5 million, she notices that one gigabyte is not enough anymore. Uh, Prometheus gets all out of memory killed, and okay, what, we, what do we do now? So she came, uh, came up to us, I, note to self, mid-journey doesn't do well with tattoo, tattoos. But anyway, uh, 
she, she asked us how to, how to scale this Prometheus initially, and we suggested that she could use a, a simple query. Just uh, get the amount of memory that Prometheus is using, uh, divide by the amount of time series you have in the, uh, in the, head, uh, the head block. The, the number is not 100% correct, correct, but it gives you a very rough estimation of how many bytes per series you're, you're using. So if, you, if she gets the 100K time series, divide, uh, you, you get the, the amount of, sorry. She has a number for the 100K. She just multiplies this for uh, 1.5 million, and she gets another number. And she knows that around 10 gigabytes is more than enough to, to measure this new load. Cool. So 10 gigabytes, like probably everybody here, the first thing that we did when we start getting OMQs is let's put more memory. But the success is still ongoing. And she just notes their parents bought two new farmers. And these new, these new farmers is producing now in total, uh, in total 10 million and a half unique time series. Uh, well, 10 gigabytes will not be enough again. And, but she, she were fine because she knows what to do. She just need to run the expression that Arthur shared and have um, some kind of estimation to understand how, many, how much memory she needs and so on. So, she came up with the Prometheus using 70 gigabytes, 20 cores. It's pretty okay, medium big size maybe. But she started facing few drawbacks that we have when we start having like Prometheus with 70 plus gigabytes of memory. Does anyone know like any kind of common problems that we might see? Like remember, she set up is just one Prometheus uh, instance running with like 70 gigabytes. Is any, anyone here using a Prometheus with 70, 70 gigabytes or more and not happy with it? I guess Grafana maybe. <laughs> cool. Some drawbacks on this um, scenario is single point of failure because she's using only one Prometheus applica. So when Prometheus got OM killed, uh, you, 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 she's not re, um, able to call ingesting any metrics. While replace taking a little longer, even if she's using like taking memory snapshots during shutdown. Uh, and depending on your host provider, you might spend more money or have some difficulties to uh, allocating bigger machines than smaller ones. So again, she came to us. Uh, we started brainstorming some ideas on how to scale Prometheus. And uh, uh, we, we mentioned that when you get a, a very big Prometheus, you, it might be a good idea to keep them small and just start to, to scale horizontally. Uh, and this in Prometheus is what we call sharding. Sharding is the strategy of splitting targets between different Prometheus instances. And it's different from replicas, where replicas you have the same Prometheus scraping the same metrics for a highly availability. Uh, some common strategies for sharding uh, that we like to call the functional sharding. We have also hash model sharding. We can do a mixture of functional and hashed. We can also run Prometheus as node agents. There are, so there are basically several strategies. And what we explain to Eva, we are going to explain to you now. Cool. The first sharding strategy, like it's the functional sharding, maybe you might see being referenced lies, uh, as uh, vertical sharding as well. But we prefer the functional one. Uh, and this means this, this is the ability to group the same, the same ta uh, ta group targets under uh, Prometheus instance. So on, on this context, EVAS can group all the soil pH devices in being monitored by one Prometheus instance while the soil humidity is being monitored by another one. And which is cool about Prometheus operator is you can achieve this in two different ways. The first one we are seeing right now, it's using a uh, namespace selector. So EVA can just run uh, each device in different namespaces and then select uh, only the monitor resources, like the pod monitors, the service monitors, uh, on these namespaces, okay? Uh, the other strategy, if you cannot use in different namespaces, because why not run everything in the full namespace, right? Um, she can just selecting everything in all namespaces and uh, using labels available on the available on the monitor resources, such as the pod monitor, scrape configs, and so on. 
and have different Prometheus doing this label selection. This is the way that we can, we can achieve functional charging on uh, Prometheus operator. Uh, the next one is uh, hash mod. Uh, Prometheus has a very cool relabeling option called hash mod, which is used for exactly this use case, to shard targets between different Prometheuses. Oh, Eva read the Prometheus documentation, she read the service monitor documentation, and she noticed that she could use the, some cool relabeling to, to achieve that. So she has, uh, she has one service monitor with all the hash mod configuration, she has one Prometheus matching the labels, so she uh, scrapes the metrics for, for this specific service monitor. And she also deploys another Prometheus and another service monitor, just changing the labels and the hash mod value. But honestly, this is quite hard. I, like, I, I work with Prometheus for quite a few years, and I still have a hard time writing relabeling configurations. So Prometheus operator has another option. Uh, you can just configure one Prometheus instance, just tell uh, on the manifest how many shards you want. And all the, the uh, relabeling configurations are written. Uh, everything just, just works. Cool. Uh, and if we have two different strategies, why not mix both, right? Because this is always a good idea. Uh, but jokes apart, like if you have a group of targets is bigger enough and you need to contain the amount of resources your Prometheus service is, is using, you can mix the functional charging and then using um, hash mod charging as well. You just need to play with the label selectors, namespace selectors, and the, the target, uh, the, the shard spec. Yeah, this is commonly used when you, you know that one group is a lot bigger than the other, and you might want to shard, to, to do a hash mod charging even, like, yeah, just mixing the, the both of them. Uh, the, other, the other strategy that we mentioned is the node agent. Unfortunately, Prometheus operator does not support uh, running Prometheus as the daemon set yet. Uh, I know that Bartek and Max from, from Google, they have uh, another Prometheus operator from Google, and they do implement this. They will have a talk later on, uh, so uh, we, suggest, we suggest that we, you watch. Uh, with that said, uh, Simon, who is, who is sitting right here, uh, myself and Kemal from Polar Signals, we are mentoring someone, uh, a student this year, to implement the node agent strategy in Prometheus Operator. So you can expect support for this uh, by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, now, before we had one Prometheus, and now we have hundreds. We don't even know the number because because it's just too many, I guess. Uh, so we have new challenges with this. The two ch uh, most common problems are a single place for querying and how to, how to do rule evaluations when some metrics is in one Prometheus, other metrics are in, in uh, like, the, the data is all spread around. So how do we do that? Uh, the Prometheus operator has nice support. You can deploy Prometheus with 10 sidecars, we don't, we don't have a CRD for Tennis Carrier, but you can deploy your own Tennis Carrier, point, uh, uh, discover all the, the sidecars with DNS discovery, and you have, you have now Tennis Carrier as a, your single place for queries. Another strategy is deploying yet another Prometheus and use the uh, Prometheus Federation. The, the strategy for our learning is quite similar. We do have a CRD for Tenus Ruler. You can just use Tenus Ruler, point uh, to the Tenus sidecars, and you have a single place to evaluate all your alerts. If you need metric deduplication, if you're using Prometheus replicas, you can use the Tenus Querier, point your Tenus Ruler to the Querier, Queriers the, do the, all the, the downsampling, the, 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 the duplication, and that's another way to get the, the single place for rule evaluations. Cool. Uh, so now Eva, she has options for charging their, their, she's, her Prometheus data, uh, like make this more scalable. Uh, but she now deploys, um, 
she, she just let, let us know that she's going to use the sharding option because it's easier. She just needs to increase or decrease the number of shards and like easy, easy to go. Uh, but like now she has an automated farm, like a lot of IoT devices, brand new farmers, and now a brand new irrigation system. Like this from time to time, trucks are crossing the, the farm, irrigating the farm and so on. And this is causing like some seasonality increase on the time series because in the morning you need to keep your crops fresh, but in the noon you don't need, but in the evening you need again. So the, the seasonality is very, uh, very high in the morning and the end of the day. Uh, summarize, sometimes we have spikes on exposed metrics. Sometimes the amount of metrics exposed go very, very low. Very low. And this is like causing when the, in the spikes moment, some Prometheus are getting OM killing. Uh, and then she's not happy because uh, this is not, not so good, right? But have a super look because Prometheus operator is just allowing you have some outscalable shards. R2 just raised a PR a few months ago implementing this uh, cool feature on the Prometheus operator where you can use some HPA flavor like or a native HPA in Kubernetes or any project like Kedan and so on. And you can have some scaling decisions based on memorization. For example, if you're using playing uh, HPA uh, Kubernetes object, you can see on the image on, the, on, the, on your left, you have the, the thresholds for memorization, the mean and the max replicas, and like we are going to scale in the shards um, proper on the Prometheus uh, CRG. On, on the other side, we can also ha use Keda to have a more smart scaling decision. Maybe you can scale by the amount of time series you are ingesting, for example. Uh, and you can have these in, in many different ways. Okay, uh, Eva is now a Prometheus operator expert. She is ready to go to Mars and start her brand new uh, farms on Mars. Uh, a, a quick recap. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, no. You go to the next one. A quick recap. Uh, we suggest start simple, small, uh, vertical scaling is super easy. Start with vertical scaling. Once vertical scaling, once you are annoyed with wall, wall replay, when it, once it's too long, okay, now it starts, you can start thinking about horizontal scaling. Uh, remember, we have several ways, functional, hash mod, a mixture, node agents. Uh, once you go there, that way, you will have to think about global query views, uh, ways to do centralized alerting. Um, if your metrics have spikes and uh, like if you have to upscale, downscale, remember we have uh, integrations with horizontal, uh, with HPAs. And, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Cool folks, so if you would like to see everything that we show you to Eva, but in practice, uh, join us on Friday. Uh, we are gonna run uh, Contribute Fast, me, Artu, Bartek, Max, and Jesus on Friday. We are showing you this in, in, in live. So hope to see you there, and thank you to be here. <laughs>